Slunkop Mountain is one of the gems of the Cape Peninsula, with spectacular views across to Cape Point and a rich diversity of flora and fauna. But the rapid urbanization of Cape Town has meant that where once there was great spaces between villages, we're now virtually on each other's doorstep. And of course for the Chakma baboons, the easy food to be found in our villages is just too tent. It was here on Slunkop that an entire troop of baboons was killed in 1990. It was a management decision that Wally Peterson did not agree with. Many years ago, it must have been in the late 1980s, I was doing a university project and started spending more and more time with the local baboon troop as part of my studies. Working so closely with the baboons, Wally soon developed favourites. This young male baboon ran across and jumped up onto the rock where I was sitting. I got such a fright I took a step backwards and fell back onto the ground with my camera and binoculars flying and this baboon looked down at me and I could have swear, sworn he was laughing at me because it must have been quite a spectacle. Later we named this guy Eric and from that moment on the troop kind of accepted me. But although the troop didn't see Wally as a threat, baboons know that some people are a threat. Some people are fearful of baboons or simplistically they think that if they hurt the baboons, baboons will learn to stay away from villagers. Wally tells us about an incident where Eric was injured. The one that sticks in my mind was when he was badly mauled by dogs and we didn't think that he was going to make it and I remember sitting next to him for ages waiting for the vet to arrive so that he could be, could be looked at and I really didn't think he was going to survive that but he was an incredibly tough old character. Eric became a bit of a celebrity worldwide when he was released from the veterinary hospital and his return to his beloved Slankop was an emotional affair. On that occasion we opened up the cage to release him um, on the edge of Slankop Mountain and it was quite special to me because while I was in the cage I could actually grab his hand and shake his hand and in a way say to him, hey you've been my mate for so long. Anyway we opened the cage door and as he ran up the path on Slunkop Mountain, he actually did a complete forward roll as if he was so happy to feel the sand of Slunkop on his back again and it was an unforgettable memory. So for all the injuries suffered, this did not stop Eric from trying to get easy food from the villagers. Eric proves although we love the individual baboon and develop bonds with the individual baboon, generally speaking we are accepting of the use of lethal methods of management when it comes to managing our baboon. In Cape Town, the officials have singled out and killed over 50 baboons in the past few years. It seems strange that we're pouring so much money into uh, the baboon monitoring project, but yet we seem to be, and there's no other word for it, but culling or killing more baboons than ever before on the peninsula. And that certainly is cause for concern. Wally feels that the indiscriminate killing, particularly of males, upsets troop structure. It changes the natural dynamics within the hierarchy of a troop. And if we continue to just take out the sort of alpha males or the larger males, we're going to be affecting that gene pool in a very substantial way. And we could just lead to the complete genetic collapse of the baboons in an isolated population like we have on the peninsula. But it is not only the genetic pool that is being threatened by continuous removal of males. It is also the infant baboons who are more at risk of being killed when there is upheaval within a troop. I would expect that that would be the case because that is what happens when a new male comes into a troop. So I, I would be quite surprised if that wasn't happening. The baboons of the Cape Peninsula are the only in South Africa who are protected from hunting. But if they are being killed at this rate, what is happening with baboons over the rest of South Africa? And I know that even in places where we think they're safe, like in areas where there are game lodges, etc., they're highly persecuted because they get shot or for raiding the lodges and things like that. So my gut feel is that the numbers of baboons are declining throughout Southern Africa. After 24 years and many differing ideas and many different management options, it seems that the main reason baboons raid into villages has yet to be addressed. And I think we can all contribute by looking after our own backyard and looking at things like how we deal with our garbage, what attracts the baboons to town. And if we all just work together, I'm sure we could live 
in a relative harmony. To Wally and many people who share his views, it is not a question of whether or not we should learn to live alongside our wildlife neighbours. Uh, our world today is a place where baboons and humans ant interact no matter where they are, um, except for the most extreme isolated baboon populations. So we have to learn to get along with these animals. It would be completely wrong for us to think that the only solution would be to exterminate these animals. So we don't have a choice. But will we make that choice in time? Uh, we're getting pretty close to that right now. And it indeed would be a very, very sad moment if that were ever to happen, that there was no possibility of ever seeing the boons on Slankop or hearing their beautiful resonating call. And it would make me very sad and I'd seriously reconsider living in this place which is next, supposed to be next to a national park. We should most certainly always have baboons in our Table Mountain National Park. Will the bark of baboons echoing across our mountains become a distant memory? It's your choice to make.